Well, yet again, we invited the Foreign Secretary, Margaret Beckett, to take part in the programme, and yet again the Foreign Office said she was too busy in her absence. Though we're joined by Ed Owen, the Foreign Office Special Advisor to Jack Straw, by Michael Portillo, the Defence Secretary under John Major, and by Michael Moore, the Foreign Affairs Spokesman for the Lib Dems. Um, he didn't sound in that speech, did he, Ed Owen, like an embattled, beleaguered, lonely man? No, he didn't. And I think one of the extraordinary things, in many ways, across policy areas, is that this Prime Minister is, is in many ways, freed of the encumbrance of elections. He's more committed of the rightness of his cause than ever before. And I, uh, I think, in many ways, that is reflected in what we've seen. What did you make of it? Well, I entirely agree with that. I mean, th th this is a man who makes foreign policy entirely on his own. I don't think it matters to him at all what the Foreign Office thinks, the Labour Party, the Conservative Party, the Liberal Democrat Party, Parliament, public opinion or anybody else. Uh, I mean, he has a very, very clear view of what his foreign policy is. And what this speech I thought was remarkable for was the way that he describes this, this crescent of extremism, draws together Hezbollah, Hamas, Syria, Iran, uh, the Shia crescent, and then also says, you know, Al-Qaeda is fighting against us as well. So the, the whole thing is linked in his mind. You almost sound as if you admire him for this. Yeah, I do, actually. I, I, I think he has a, a, an absolutely clear foreign policy view. I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite typical of the Foreign Office to want to take a different view. It's typical of the Foreign Office to, uh, I think, not to see it in those terms, and also is to think that... healthy? Is it healthy that one man is ignoring the cabinet, his party, parliament and all the other institutions you mentioned. It depends whether he's more right than the rest, doesn't it? I think he, I think he has a great deal more experience and a much clearer view than the others. Uh, and that is why he speaks now with such conviction. Michael Moore, what did you make of this speech? We've heard a lot of these themes before. In fact, he's made speeches almost identical to this in recent months. And there's a lot in there that normal people in the cold light of day might agree with, not least his concern that we don't just go about our missions militarily, but with a values base. And that must mean about winning hearts and minds. And the problem we've got is that inside that speech, we also heard that apocalyptic language that Michael Portillo referred to, the arc of extremism. I don't think that's designed to win hearts and minds and also it all sits ill at ease with the diplomatic stance that the British are taking along with the Americans which is standing in the way of a united international voice calling for an, inter an immediate ceasefire in the Lebanon and in uh, the rest of Israel. Um, Ed Owen, at the time you were at the Foreign Office with Jack Straw, I mean no, you're a diplomatic fellow and you're not going to drop any clangers, <laughs> but I mean it is very noticeable that the Foreign Office is going out of its way to talk about how Mrs. Beckett is not going on holiday and she'd make her own holiday plans, all the rest of it. I mean, as if there is a problem that they're acknowledging, but they don't quite know how to deal with it. This didn't happen when you were there. Surely not. Uh, the, the, there's always been a difference between the number 10 view and foreign policy in the Foreign Office, and, and I think Michael's right in his description, that this, this is a Prime Minister who feels this is, an, this is all the stuff about Blair being a poodle and the rest of it, is, is missing the, the basic point, which is that Tony Blair believes fundamentally this is a battle of ideologies. This is a battle between the fundamental forces of democracy against Islamic extremism. And, as Michael says, all, all is pulled into this big battle. That is not a view of the Foreign Office instinctively. The Foreign Office does not regard it as this big battle. It regards the part of management of international relations being about stability between states. And that's its instinctive posture. So you, but that's probably what we're seeing played out here, it seems to me. This, this is not fundamentally about Israel and Palestine. Israel and Palestine is played out between the Prime Minister of Israel and Mahmoud Abbas. And on the same side, believing in a two-state solution, you've got countries like Saudi Arabia and you've got Egypt and you've got most of the Arab countries. This is quite different. This is about Hezbollah and Hamas and Iran and Syria, who are all forces who believe in the destruction of Israel. They do not believe in a two-state solution. And that is, what, that is the clarity that Blair has. And I think the Foreign Office and the others who are against him are, are seeing this as though it was still part of that... Palestinian question, which it, which it clearly is not. I think, uh, sorry, just to, uh, Michael, I, mean, I, I agree with that. It's about time you did. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it was, it, I agree with most of that. I, I don't think that the Foreign Office necessarily sees this just in terms of the Middle East conflict. I think there is a... But I think there's the, 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 the Foreign Office view see, sees complex issues sure. here, and there are different issues. Are, whether Hezbollah is not the same as bin Laden, the Syrian issue is not the same as the Iranian issue. The Foreign Office tends to see a complexity, whereas the Prime Minister tends to see uh, simple 
fundamental Manichaean battles. Manichaean view of the world, a struggle between good and evil. Well, it's not quite as simplistic as that, but he does regard well, it. Well, well, but, 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 I, but I think some of the complexities are not as complex as people believe. I mean, it, 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 it is complex to say that Al-Qaeda is Sunni and that, uh, you know, Syria and Iran, these are, these are Shia and therefore they can't be the same thing. They are not the same thing, but they are coming together in an ideological struggle uh, which is directed against Israel and directed against the West. And, and that, I think, is, is part think, of the clarity of the Prime Minister's speech. Sorry, just one, one final point. I mean, I think what, what the Prime Minister's speech tonight, I think, reflects the fact that his concern, I think, which is in the middle of this great battle, if you like, stands moderate Arab opinion. And I think he's obviously yes. been stung to some extent by the criticism within the Arab world of what's been happening in Lebanon. Uh, and he's obviously very concerned that moderate majority opinion in, in the Arab world does not swing towards extremism as opposed to the West. Michael Moore, do you say there were no talk about mechanisms in the Prime Minister's speech tonight, a lot of talk about principle. Uh, do you get any sense of mechanisms or levers which could be pulled in order to promote the sort of change that he's talking about? One of the most important levers would be the so-called special relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States, with half of the British cabinet in open revolt against the Prime Minister's position. Perhaps this is a time when he should actually realise that, in contrast to what Michael Portillo was saying, this is more than just a simple situation in the Middle East. There are real complexities. The Foreign Office expertise ought to be listened to. And unless we get the international community talking with one voice and making it clear to all the participants, not least Israel, that we need an immediate ceasefire and we will not tolerate anything less, then the situation will get worse and we will be even further from the solution, two-state or otherwise, to the Middle East problems that we all hope for. Ed Owen, just let me ask you, in your experience of the Foreign Office, even if Britain joined with the rest of Europe and called for an immediate ceasefire, would it make the slightest bit of difference? No. <laughs> uh, bluntly, in, in that respect. I, and I, I think that the, the, the issue about the ceasefire, I mean, the, 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 you, you, the, it's right that ceasefire against the cessation facilities, it sounds pretty much similar. But although I draw your attention to the fact that the president on the press conference last week talked about cessation facilities. So in a sense, there's a distinction without difference. But I think the key issue here is that the prime minister and the president have seen this as an opportunity in order to achieve a strategic goal in that battle of, of, a battle of the fundamental yeah. ideologies. And that is about weakening fundamentally Hezbollah in the south of Lebanon and that's been a key part to him. All right gents thank you very much all of you. Uh, well no time for other news uh, tonight because of our breaking story reports from Lebanon speaking of Israeli airstrikes and landings by helicopter in the Bekaa Valley north of the conflict zone on the border. There are now reports of fighting on the ground between Hezbollah and Israeli troops. The Israeli security cabinet minister Itzhak Herzog told us he expects the violence to continue. It is assumed that we would need uh, another 10 days or so. And uh, I, we all realize that there is a, a, a time limit ticking with the convening of the Security Council on Friday.